Hi, my name is Nanny Harris. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of Liba is the time last year in physics class when she had the honor of being lab partners with me, Lucy Landrum, and Abby Schutzberg. <laughs> if you didn't know, Lucy and Abby cannot agree on a single thing. While I chose to ignore this banter or occasionally scream at them, Liba had the self-control and composure to successfully get the lab done and somehow maintain the bickering to a minimum. Not only does Liba maintain her composure in the most stressful times, she's also a dedicated worker, passionate about her faith, and has some pretty rockin' eyebrows. So please give it up for Liba and Nunn this year. I have always felt like the elephant in the room. When I was in second grade, I had very long hair. It was something that made me feel pretty and stand out. My eight-year-old self was proud of how long it had grown and how it made me feel like a little princess. To my dismay, people told me I needed to cut it because I kept whacking them with my ponytail every time I turned my head. <laughs> so that summer, I got my hair cut to my shoulders, and to be honest, I didn't feel pretty anymore. Whenever I started a new year at school and teachers paused while calling attendance, I knew my name was next. I'd always hear anything but my name, from Libba to Libya and somehow even Linda. <laughs> For a while, I debated whether I should tell people to just start calling me Libby instead. It was a simple, well-known, normal name and would make everyone's lives easier. Eventually, I learned to embrace my beautiful, unique name and decided the right thing to do is be myself. I love my name, and now I make sure to correct people when they've made a mistake rather than let it slide. As many of you know, I am a Pakistani-American. Sometimes balancing both my cultures at once has been challenging. I used to hate bringing Pakistani meals to lunch at school because I was too busy worrying about what others would think about me. I was scared people would give me looks and tell me it smelled bad. Whenever I got henna done for Eid, I was concerned people would think I just doodled on my hands for lack of paper. Now I'm not ashamed to bring Pakistani dishes for lunch or to put henna on my hands because these things are what make me who I am. In fact, I am proud of my Pakistani culture and love sharing it with my friends. This past summer, I went to Pakistan and I felt awkward speaking to my aunts, uncles, and cousins in English with my American accent. Being in Pakistan, I felt compelled to speak in Urdu, or in English, but with a brown accent. Every time I spoke English with my American accent, I felt out of place. To my surprise, my family liked it and wanted me to improve, help improve their English. Through these experiences, I have learned to appreciate both the Pakistani and American parts of my identity. Being a Muslim in a predominantly Christian school and country, I have struggled with my religious duties. As a young child, I would always be confused as to why I didn't get a break from school on my religious holiday Eid. I wanted to be able to celebrate other holidays like Christmas and Easter, just like everyone around me, even though I knew I wasn't supposed to. Whenever my mom attended school events, I would be embarrassed because of her abnormal clothing. Especially in today's political climate, being Muslim has been difficult and has been a true test to my identity. With the support of my friends and teachers, I have been able to get through this tough time and proudly call myself a Muslim. I have struggled with my identity for a very long time. I always wished to be a normal person who did, who did not stand out because of her differences. I have let others make decisions for me so that I could be what they thought I should be. I believed being different was negative. If I wasn't like everyone else around me, then I was weird and lame. As I've gotten older, I have learned to embrace my unique identity as others have accepted and appreciated me as well. I would like to tell each and every one of you, the prettiest thing you can be is yourself. There is absolutely no need to sacrifice and change your identity for the sake of others' approval. Now I no longer feel like the elephant in the room and I want the same for you. I would especially like to thank my parents for teaching me not to be ashamed of my identity and to embrace my physical, cultural, and religious attributes. I would like to leave you all with this beautiful message from my hero, Muhammad Ali. 
Don't wait for the world to recognize your greatness. Live it and the, let, let the world catch up to you. Thank you.